Hi, my name is Manuel Tesanos. I will be covering the strategy analysis of Citigroup. Citigroup is one of the largest financial firms in the world. Its current business strategy is to provide financial services and products to its corporate, institutional, and retail clients. This institution offers diversified financial services that meet the need of a, ver of a vast array of customers. Citigroup has approximately 200 million accounts and has presence in more than 140 countries. The financial services and products provided by Citigroup include consumer banking and credit, corporate and investment banking, securities brokerage, transaction services, and wealth management. To carry out its current business strategy, Citigroup has been divided into two main segments, Citicorp and City Holdings. Citicorp is comprised by the Regional Consumer Banking and the Institutional Consumer Group. The Regional Consumer Banking is subdivided in Retail Banking, Local Commercial Banking, City Personal Wealth Management, City Branded Cards, and Latin American Asset Management. The other section, Institutional Consumer Groups, is subdivided in Securities and Banking and Transaction Services. City's second main segment, City Holding, is subdivided in Brokerage and Asset Management, Local Consumer Lending, and Specialized Assets Pool. These subdivisions of City Group ensure that the company can continue to provide specialized services and products to consumers, corporations, governments, and institutions around the globe. As the leading global financial service company, City Group has presence in Asia, Pacific, Europe, Middle East, and Africa, Latin America, and North America. This location strategy allows the firm to continue to provide um, service to its current customers and to benefit from any new business opportunities around the globe. Citigroup is amongst the five largest banks in the United States based on consolidated assets. Hi, my name is Andres Rodriguez. I will be covering the financial performance analysis for Citigroup. First, we'll look at the liquidity of Citigroup. Liquidity ratios determine how quickly assets can be turned into cash and also pay its debt. This is useful for commercial banks in the event of loan requests or loan defaults. If Citigroup were to need a loan, the lending bank, bank would like to know how dependable they are to repay the loan. Citigroup's current ratio is 1.1 as of the third quarter 2010. Against the industry average of 0.88, Citigroup ranks third of 20 money central banks. Citigroup seems to be very liquid, which is a great sign for investors and lenders. This may help lending capabilities and new investor attraction in the future. Now let's analyze asset utilization. An important ratio to analyze if Citigroup is utilizing its assets efficiently is the assets turnover ratio. The assets turnover ratio determines how efficiently the assets are generating sales. Citigroup currently has a ratio of 0.05 as of the third quarter 2010. This means that assets are generating 5% returns on sales or revenues. A higher asset turn turnover ratio can indicate that the firm could be reaching its capacity and could reflect poorly on its financial health. In this case, Citigroup has an advantage. The industry average is 0.04, meaning that Citigroup is beating many of its peers. This can create investor confidence in the future as well. Profitability can be measured by using the return on equity ratio. Return on equity, or ROE, is an important ratio when analyzing productivity. The ROE as of the end of third quarter 2010 is 1.06%. This is extremely low considering the industry average of 8.7%. This is mainly due to too much liquidity and not enough reinvestments in the company. 
This low ratio compared to the industry average can create uncertainty going into 2011. Investors look for returns on their investments. If Citigroup cannot remain profitable, then the reward is not equivalent to the risk for many investors. Finally, the market value ratio is tying in the performance ratios altogether. The market value ratio relates the firm's stock price to its earnings, cash flow, and book value per share. These ratios give management an indication of what investors think of the company's past performance and future prospects. The price per earnings ratio, or PE ratio, was 29.5 as of the third quarter 2010. The industry average was 8.55, making Citigroup in the 93rd percentile. This creates more attractiveness for investors. Overall, Citigroup is, a good is in good financial health and proves a worthy investment in any portfolio, but lacks profitability for the short term due to the ROE. Perhaps other banks with higher ROE prove more profitable than Citigroup, but many come at more risks. Citigroup needs to utilize its cash towards more profitable operating habits and investments in order to increase profitability and pay dividends to its shareholders. This can create value for investors and can be useful in the current penny stock market valuation price that Citigroup is trading at. Hi, I'm Lisa Cohen and I'm going to be covering the strategic options and evaluation section. Citigroup has endured some trying times during the past few years as a result of different factors, such as Sandy Wells' vision of creating a financial superpower by merging Citicorp and Travelers, which actually resulted in huge losses for the company as well as the United States and overall global financial crisis. According to the New York Times, Citigroup stayed afloat only due to three bailouts totaling $45 billion in federal funds. While Citigroup's strategy for growth during the 10 years before Vikram Pandit became CEO consisted of acquiring different businesses, Pandit is actually now trying to shift Citigroup's focus from being a product-based business to a consumer-based one and as a result creating a more organic growth instead of an acquisitions-based growth. In an effort to push the consumer-based approach, the company is investing billions of dollars in a multi-year IT project which is meant to integrate consumer branches and products around the world. Additionally, the CEO has divided the company into Citicorp and City Holdings. The plan is to create revenue while reducing or selling the non-profit gener generating assets which have been placed under City Holdings. During this process, however, it is crucial to understand that Citigroup is under great scrutiny from the government, regulators, traders, shareholders, and the media. Therefore, any strategic option, such as those previously mentioned, must not only earn official approval from the Fed and banking regulators, but must also raise the company's market value in order to accomplish its goal of benefiting shareholders and stakeholders, and therefore increasing revenue and profit growth. Other strategic approaches would involve keeping those assets under city holding and focusing on transforming them into profit generating businesses. However, this might require huge capital and resource investments, which the company currently could not afford. Another option would be that the company might consider selling Banamex. Although it is one of the most profitable businesses under Citigroup, it would also represent a sale which could generate the necessary capital for investing and improving the other businesses and converting them to profit generating. CEO Vikram Pandit has decided, however, to return Citigroup to its pre-Sandy Wilder roots, focusing on consumer banking and building upon Manuel Medina Morris, head of consumer banking and previously Banamex CEO, vision of having one consumer base where products and services will be globally integrated and through which Citigroup's clients, both individual and institutional, would be provided better service and offer the best product options based on their individual needs. Thank you. Hi, my name is Gina Cohen and I'll be covering the external analysis for Citigroup. Many features of an industry actually determine the level of profitability of a company. First, we'll analyze Citigroup's opportunities and threats. It's based on the SWOT analysis. These are the two aspects that refer to the external environment, while strengths and weaknesses refer to the internal environment. Citigroup's opportunities are that it can create new markets in developing countries. 
is growth potential and market share, and it has the ability to attract more investors due to current and expensive stock price. Its threats are the current financial crisis and an increase in competition, both domestic and foreign. A more complete and widely used framework for external analysis, however, is Porter's five forces of competition, which views the profitability of an industry as determined by five sources of competitive pressure. We'll look at each of these one by one. Competition from substitutes. The threat of substitutes is very high. As stated by the Federal Reserve, virtually every financial product offered by the banking industry is also offered either identically or by close substitute outside the regulated financial services industry. Competition from entrants. The threat of new entrants is relatively low due to existing barriers to entry. The capital requirements of becoming an established financial institution are high, which tends to make potential entrants hesitant. Additionally, late entrants have to spend high amounts in, in advertising due to the fact that they would be competing with companies that are well established and have brand recognition and customer loyalty. Competition from established rivals. Competition is very high, as the offerings amongst com competitors are all very similar, so customers are willing to switch companies depending on who offers the best benefits. Currently, financial institutions are even offering money to new clients who open checking or savings account with them. Bank of America is Citigroup's greatest competitor in the United States, but other financial institutions such as Chase and Wells Fargo also take market share away from Citigroup. In order to maintain and grow market share, Citi has to offer better benefits to customers to ensure customer satisfaction and possibly customer loyalty. The power of suppliers. City and all financial institutions have three main suppliers of money, the products that they offer. Depositors, the credit market, and the central bank. Depositors have no bargaining power, as it is the bank itself that sets the interest rate it'll pay. The credit market, as a source of supply of money, is open to all qualified participants at all times. This source of supply can be argued to be infinite. Currently, the central bank will supply the banking industry nearly unlimited amounts at a reasonable cost as well. Power of buyers. Buyers or retail customers have no bargaining power as they are unable to negotiate with the bank. Negotiations are based on the customer's credit, st credit score, his or her ability to, to pay off loans and the amount of the loan as well as the structure and terms and conditions of said loan. Thank you for listening. Hi, I'll now be covering the strategic recommendations, risks, and challenges that Citigroup faces. In order to please Wall Street and improve the share price, Citigroup will need to increase their return on equity. They could do this by util utilizing cash in order to reinvest in the company's growth or invest in third-party investments in their portfolio. The risks and challenges they face are making a poor investment, investing in long-term investments which would decrease current assets and lower the current ratio, or receive resistance from shareholders based on the strong Tier 1 capital ratio of 12.5%. Additionally, we would recommend that Citigroup focus on transforming the non-profit generating assets, which have been placed under city holdings, into profit generating businesses. This could be done by organizing a team whose main purpose is developing these assets and making them profitable. However, they face the risk of, invest of investing time, money, and resources in these assets and not receiving benefits in the long run. Finally, Citigroup should also develop new services as well as update their current services in order to retain and attract new clients. Their ATM depositing process, for example, is not as advanced as its principal competitors, Bank of America. City needs to keep up with the new technological advances as well as innovate and be the first to bring certain services or products in order to attract clients and develop customer loyalty.